ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 13? 14. 14. Wow, we're already on episode 14. Episode 14 of the Brighter Horizons podcast. And today, main topic is going to be, is change necessary? But before that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. As of today, we are at 110 flipping subscribers, guys. That is crazy. We appreciate every single one of you. You were going to say something. No, I was just shocked by this intro. Like, this was a very different intro than what we usually do. I don't know. I was just interested. But, yeah, thank you guys so much for uh, smashing 100 subscribers. Pause. <laughs> oh. Sorry, my bad. But the milestone, okay? Thank you guys so much. I like it's. It's really crazy to see that on the channel. So, truthfully, we appreciate that. Like, and, a lot. you know, the, the truth is we always knew that this was, it's going to take time to get to certain places. But... Even seeing one person subscribe, it just genuinely continuously fuels us to do more. And, you know, seeing the number hit 100 after only, what, like 13 episodes is shocking. And genuinely, we appreciate every single one of you. We hope that we bring value to your life. Thank you for joining us. And we hope to see you down the line. For sure. And now, let's get into it. So, you know one thing that I was thinking about? Yeah. When I was driving today... Drove past the guy, you know, the guy a couple blocks down the street who is, does the traffic control? Oh, yeah, yeah. One of these days, I'm going to go up and talk to him because I guess I should explain the story first. There's a man who l seems like he's retired or close to that age, and he volunteers at a school, and he does the crossing guard work. No matter whether it's sunny, raining, snowing, this guy is out there at 7 in the morning guiding traffic to make sure that children can cross the street safely. And every single time... I drive past him, or anybody drives past him, he waves with a smile on his head. Smile on his face. face. Yeah. There we go. With a smile on his face. Mm -hmm. And every time I drive past him, I think, man, people like him make this place, this world, a better place. So the question is, do you want to be one of those people? Right? It always starts with, I'm sure that he's had a rough life. I'm sure that not everything has been sunshine and rainbows for him. But he woke up one day. And just decided, you know what? I'm going to start being a nicer person. I'm going to start smiling. I'm going to start waving. I'm going to volunteer. I'm going to do these things. Sure, it started one little change at a time, but those changes compound over time and made him the great person that he is today. So one of these days, I'll get back to you guys on this. I'm going to go do an interview with him, talk to him and see his life story and understand what kind of a man he is under the crossing guard outfit. It's crazy because I know that we've only driven past that road when we were in high school. Because we never drove that way in elementary school. Mm -hmm. So that's, for me at least, four years I have driven past this man. And not once out of those four years did I ever say a word to him or hear what he sounds like. Like, I have no idea what he sounds like. That's crazy. After four years, and I've waved at him countless times. Every morning that I pass him, he waved. And it just, I have no idea. But you know, some people, their smile tells it all. Yeah. Like, some people just sure. give off that energy, mm -hmm. you know? Shout out to my boy, John. This one guy that I ran into one time. He just, you know, the second you hear him speak, you can tell he's smiling. Mm -hmm. Like, his voice has a smile on its face, if that makes sense. Yeah, no. Some I people just have that happy voice, and I think I think that everyone can have that happy voice. Mm -hmm. It's just a lot of people choose not to. Because I think a lot of people think I'll come off as annoying, but I don't think that's real. Like, I can't tell you how many times it's amazing when somebody walks up to me and they're, like, super energetic when they talk to me. It's very rare times where I'll be like, man, I really don't want to talk to you right now. Because you bring that kind of energy into my life. It's like, you know, bringing, you're bringing sunshine into other people's lives. So maybe something was grim earlier, and now I've got this sunshine in my life. Like, I appreciate it. I appreciate that change, that way of moving away from, you know, whatever sad thing. I got this new person in my life that's going to bring happiness. I don't know why I would ever... Speak against that. Yeah, you know? well, the truth is, I. it's interesting to me that people don't want to be genuine because they don't want to come off a certain, like, look a certain way yeah. in front of other people. I think that we should all strive to be more, number one, positive, but also just be real with other people, man. Nobody wants to sit here and talk to the guy who just tells you what you want to hear, who exactly. just acts the way that everybody else acts and just fits into that cookie-cutter shape. Nobody wants that because that's exactly what school is nowadays. It's just everyone being boring. And that's what makes school boring. It's because everybody's trying to be cool or popular and do what's, you know, the trend right now. But 
why not just do what you want to do? Why don't you just enjoy your life? Why don't you show up to school with a smile on your face even though everybody says school sucks? Yeah, that's so interesting to me because I understand it, man. I There are days where I'm like, bro, I don't want to go to school today. Mm -hmm. I really don't want to do this. I'm tired. I don't want to sit in a class and learn about calculus for an hour. But I still go, and I'm not going to go there and be like, guys, this is the worst. Everything sucks. I hate my life. Exactly. Because what's the point? Right? What am I really gaining from any of that? I go out there and I spew garbage to everybody else around me, and then what? I feel worse and everybody around me feels worse? Is that really the kind of thing that we want to do in this world? Do you really want to drag yourself down and bring everybody else with you? Mm -hmm. Like, that makes no sense to me. Like, school is such an amazing place. Like, think about the fact that you get to go there for six hours and hang out with your friends. Sure, yeah, maybe you can't talk for a lot of those six hours, but imagine if you were isolated at home. A lot of people think, oh, I'd love to just stay at home. But it was what the pandemic showed us. With half of us, when we got quarantined, you were like, bro, this is the worst time of my life. I can't talk to my friends. I can't see my friends. I can't do any of this. And you could say, yeah, with the new online stuff, of course, you can go on call with your friends whenever. But it's not the same. It's not the same as hanging out with them. Mm -hmm. And I, I guarantee you that after a certain amount of time, people will get so bored of hanging out online with their friends. If you never got to see your friends in person, I know your friendships would. Sorry, your friendships would die out. Hundred percent. And the crazy thing is, I read a. I was reading my book today, and in the chapter that I was reading, it was talking about mindfulness and how people don't have the capacity to be still with their thoughts and learn how to do nothing the right way. Which is interesting because there is a right way to do nothing. Like doing nothing means it doesn't mean wasting time. It means genuinely giving your brain. A period of relaxation, which is definitely something we should talk about on a future episode. Mindfulness. Sure. I'll, I'll definitely. make sure to keep that down. But that one of the shocking studies that was done was they were given, like I think, a hundred men and women, and they all sat in. They were given a chance to sit in this room by themselves for fifteen minutes, just fifteen minutes in complete silence. Okay, there's a buzzer. If you press it, you get an electric shock, but you get out. Okay. 67% of men quit within the first, I think, seven minutes or something, and 25% of women quit as well. But the interesting thing is people can't sit for 15 minutes with their own thoughts. That was just crazy to me. I don't remember how this like came to my mind. You were saying something about it, and now I don't remember where it came from. I had no clue. I guess in, oh, with isolation. Like, isolation, yeah, that's yeah. what I, see, there we go. So you go so insane from being alone. Mm -hmm. Why not enjoy the company of other people there? Mm -hmm. But also, if you're one of those people who can't sit in a room by yourself for 15 minutes, that's kind of a problem. Seriously, this is a social experiment for you guys. Try it at home. Just sit down for a minute. Take a break from everything. A genuine break where you don't go on your phone, you don't watch Netflix, you don't read, you don't do anything. Just sit for even try five minutes, okay? But if you can, do 15, right? See how your mind feels because I do meditation every single day for 10 minutes, right? And those 10 minutes, it unravels a lot of the thoughts that you've been having throughout the day, right? But anyways, the biggest point is to try it, see how you are. And if you can't do it, maybe it's time to make a change. Yeah, precisely. Because I think... What happens in our world is with so much information, whether it be, well, especially because of the internet, you're getting things from all the way across the world instantly at your fingertips. It kind of jumbles up all this information in your brain and compresses it into one dense brick of information. And then you trying to surf through it and find out what did I really learn? It's almost impossible because there's so much. There's so much garbage mixed in with the good stuff. Mm -hmm. So if you take that time to reflect and step away, then what you can do is you can, as you said, unravel it, split it up and be like, okay, what is actually in my brain? What am I really thinking about? And is this stuff really important? Yeah, exactly. And as you begin to learn, you begin to find the framework for what needs to change in your life. Mm -hmm. And that leads us to why we decided to talk about this in the first place. Is change necessary? Do you really have to try new things? Do you have to go out there and you know try new foods, go skydiving once? Do you have to do any of these things or is it better to just lay at home in your bed, watch Netflix, and eat junk food as you always have? So what is the deal? Do we really need to change? And my answer, and I believe many people's answer, is yes, we do need to change. Because if you really break it down, 
change is the basis of all life in the universe because we all started from, let's say you believe the science approach of we all started from a bacteria or a cell. That cell continued to evolve and now here we are. Glory in all of our creation. But none of this would have happened if animals didn't learn to adapt. They didn't learn to change. They didn't learn to evolve over time. So if it's a universal truth that for a species to get better and to continue living, it needs to adapt and change, why do we as humans think that just because we can think beyond the scopes of the natural kingdom that we are free from this process of evolution? Maybe it's not the same where we start living underwater because we grow gills. No, but at least your mindset can change. You can adopt a new way of thinking. Maybe that's the next step in your journey to being better. And also, you never really know what's on the other side of that change that you make. Maybe you'd regret it down the line. And let's be honest, nobody wants to regret anything. Regret is the single worst emotion I could possibly ever feel. And I think that most people agree, right? Do you agree? Yes, it's it's so terrible. It's I wish I could have done something is one of the most brutal things because you're trapped because there's nothing you can do about it. Exactly. So you have to sit with it. And I think that's one of the worst things is to have something haunt over you. To just sit there and be like, yeah, I'm here. This is the mistake you made, Mm -hmm. and you can't change it. That's why I think that regret is such a different feeling as opposed to many other emotions like happiness, sadness, anger. That Those kinds of things, they happen in the moment, and then they can go. But regret is something that stays with you. Mm -hmm. It stays with you for a long time. It's very, very hard to get past regret. So the best step is try to minimize how much regret you have. Exactly, because just like you said, you can't process regret. Mm -hmm. Happiness, sadness, any event that leads to those emotions arising, you can deal with them because they're happening in the moment. Yeah. But something that's already gone. Regret is something that has already happened. Mm -hmm. So how do you change it? You can't. You can't resolve that past, that mistake that you made. But then if you flip it on its head and think about the future, that's also why worry and stress is one of the worst, are some of the worst things you can deal with too. Because... That's in the future. You can't even deal with that either. But the worst part about worrying and stress is that you think that because you're stressing about it, because it hasn't happened yet, your worrying and stress actually makes a difference. But it doesn't. It's the same thing. Exactly. That's what I say. You spend so much time worrying about inevitable reality. Mm -hmm. What is going to happen is going to happen. So why are you so afraid to let it occur? Yeah. Right. These things aren't going to go away just because you're stressing about it. So why are you so afraid to run towards it? Exactly. And at the end of the day, you know that you're going to end up there eventually. Mm -hmm. So just embrace it. Embrace change. Because Buddha once said, famously, the only thing permanent about life is... Impermanence? Good man. Did he say that? Yeah, 100%. You sure about that? Where did you get that quote from? The or? He said that, really? I do not remember that. In Endgame. I'm 1,000% sure I heard it in some Buddhist textbook. You sure about that? No doubt. Okay, I'll believe you. Maybe maybe Thor store from Buddha, which makes more sense. I'd yes, say. probably. Probably. But, but yeah. yeah. Whoa. Okay, we're not doing this no, we're again. Not doing we're not, doing we're not this running again. that back. No, okay. Mm. Point is, the only thing permanent about life is impermanence. Now, there's a lot of things that I just realized that we'll talk about that some people won't understand. That's kind of crazy to think that like we can have a conversation and somebody who hears the exact same words won't grasp the meaning because their background knowledge is completely different. Perspective right there. Mm. Linking it back to last week's episode. Yeah. Good job. But the reason why that's true is think about a rock, okay? A rock isn't living. But even a rock that is not a living being over time will become sand. Any plant that lives right now will die. Any organism that lives right now will die. Any building we've ever built will crumble and fall through the sands of time. What is what does all that mean? It just means that none of this is permanent. None of this lasts forever. So why do you think that your mindset or who you are right now needs to last forever? Why do you think that nothing needs to change in your life, that you're perfectly fine the way you are, that everything can stay the same and life will be great? That's not true. Mm-hmm. I think that you have to have a dynamic view on life. You have to understand that I'm not perfect, but things are going to come and go. I'm going to get better over time. That's the secret to life. I think it's about being open to change. It's mm. about letting it happen. Because once you become resistant to it, you're going to feel a whole lot of, I'd say, 
both anger and sadness because change sometimes we can't control. That's one big thing a lot of people struggle with is when you start to worry about things you can't control, things that are out of your control. Because it's a very difficult concept to grasp. Is man, I can't really do anything about this, can I? And you, because you always want to. Everybody wants to have full control over everything because that way it can be the way you want it. But that's not life, right? People aren't always going to work according to your schedule. So when people begin to do things that you know don't align with what you believe, we begin to go against it. Mm-hmm. But if instead we try to look from their perspective and see, okay, why are they doing it? Like, I'll take one big example, which is, you know, building a new homes. Like, right by our house, they're, you know, they're cutting down a forest and they're building a new house or housing complex. And at first, I hated it. I was like, God, this is terrible. And I still believe that it's so important that we preserve, like, the environment. Like, I completely agree with that. But then I said, and I think, damn, there's a lot of people out there with no homes. Like, within days, those homes will be filled with people that might have been on the street. And to me, it's, why did well, why are they building the houses? It's to shelter people. I think they, the government could do a better job of like how they go about it, but it's to see their perspective. They're not cutting down the trees to get rid of a forest. They're cutting down trees to house uh, homeless people. And I think that if I la- if I was so resilient to change, and I was like, God, I hate these these construction workers building these houses. They're taking down the forest instead of saying, "Hey, you know what? Like, you know, the environment's changing, and we're getting more people in houses. Right? That's a good thing. It's a benefit. Now I'm more happy as a result of it. So to accept change is to accept happiness. Damn, that's a good quote. Mm. To accept change is to accept happiness, and that's true because if you accept the the waves of life, you know, if you don't try to swim against the current, you'll enjoy the ride. You'll enjoy floating through the ocean in a relaxing manner. But if you're constantly thinking, oh my God, I want to go this way, I want to go this way, but it's pushing me this way, what do I do? You're just going to be cons- consistently insufferable. You know, I'm not going to lie though. It's a very fine line. Mm. It's a fine line between letting everything happen versus like still going on your path, right? You know, just because society is pushing one way doesn't mean that you need to go the same way, though. No, 100%. I I, I'd say it. It's, a, it's, a, it's, again, it's a very fine line. You need to know that it's important that I understand change. Whether I let it dictate my life is a different story, I think. I think the two are differentiable. They aren't the same thing. So, on one hand, you need to know, like, this is where I want to go in my life. This is what I want to do. The other side, you need to know, hey, other people are going to do other things, mm-hmm. but does it really affect my path? If not, why does it matter? And if so, how will it affect my path? Mm. Because sometimes it could make it better. True, true. But you're so resilient in your own ways that you don't want to change. And what does that lead you to do? It leads to you not going where you could have gone. Very you know? true. Very and you true. know what that leads to? What? Regret. Regret. Ah, exactly. there you go. Yeah. All comes full circle. Kind of crazy. Indeed. But you want to know the second reason why change is necessary? Let me ask you this. Right now, is it your ideal version of your life? I'd say no. Right? There are some things that could improve, right? It doesn't mean that we live a bad life. I mean, yeah. I'm happy to be alive. I'm happy with where I am. I'm grateful for what I have, 100%. No need for me to sit here and mope that I don't have some things, right? Yeah. Just simply be happy for the things that I have. But let's be honest. I still aspire to be someone great. I still aspire to have all these different things in the future. So if your current mindset, your current values, your current work ethic isn't getting you to exactly where you want to be, why do you think that nothing needs to change? You're not where you are, right? You're Sorry, you're not where you want to be. So why do you think that who you are now is right or perfect? I think that's a foolish mentality. Yeah, You should be open to change because you're not the perfect version of yourself. And even if you are, if you think you're the perfect version of yourself, I think that's an even bigger issue. Yeah, Let's be honest. None of us are perfect. There is no perfection. There is no perfection in life. We're always going to have some flaws with us. But to strive to be the best version of ourself, that. Yeah, I think many people get that concept mixed up of best and perfect. 
Like, because perfection is just not real. Like, I think we've established this, that a perfect version of yourself just isn't real. You will always have a flaw, but that's fine. Like, it's okay to have flaws. That's part of life. But if you, you should look not at your flaws like, oh my God, I hate myself for who I am. Mm -hmm. Instead, you should say, damn, I'm happy for who I can be. Right? Exactly. Be happy with moving forward. Be happy with changing yourself. Be happy with becoming better. People have this weird notion nowadays that all progress has to be pain. Mm -hmm. I think that pain is a great teacher. I believe that mistakes can are the, well, I think mistakes are the greatest teacher of all time. You learn from your mistakes. But mistakes don't have to be painful. Failure doesn't have to be painful. Failure is a teaching moment. If you really think about it, if anything, failure should be a happy time. Like if you really, really boil it down, failing teaches you what you should do better. Mm. So instead of looking to your, because like when you fail, now that's in the past. Instead of looking to the past and thinking, damn, I'm so sad about what's happened in the past. Instead, look of how I'm going to succeed in the future. Because now I know not to do what I did. Exactly. So you change. But if instead I just look back and I'm like, I'm just going to ignore my past mistakes. I'm just going to do the same thing over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And you're just going to keep repeating your same mistakes. So instead, embrace the mistakes and then embrace the change that allows you to find new successes. Damn. Brody became a philosopher part two. Yeah. Damn, you really have these moments where you just enter the flow state. Yeah, huh? exactly. It is. That's it interesting. Is That's inter very, very interesting. I was going to say it, dude. We're locked in. We might be locked in this episode. Yeah, you're not locked in because your hoodie has one string tucked in, and I've been looking at it the whole episode, oh, and it's been bad. bothering me. It's my fault. And they're not even even. Yo, oh, my okay, okay, God. Me, what you know are what? you doing, go, buddy? Go on, a, go on a bit of a monologue. Go on a monologue? Yeah, I got to fix it. <laughs> Yo, hey, stop hating. Stop hating. Okay, anyways, point is, as I was saying, the second point that I was talking about was if you're not where you want to be in life, then don't you think something should change? But let's say you are where you want to be. You're happy. Everything's great. Let's say your goal was to be a millionaire and you've accomplished that goal. Bought your parents a house, a nice car. They're living a good life. You have your family. Everything's great. Now what? Do you really need to change anymore? Well, I still think yes. Well, you might be asking, how do I change then? If everything's great, if I love my life, why would I change anything? Well, I'm not saying go and throw it all away and try something stupid. No, but go and try something new. Like I said in the beginning, maybe you're afraid of heights. Go skydiving. Try something crazy, right? Do all these things that life has to offer because as everyone says, you only live once. Yeah, That's the truth. And there's a famous saying, I don't remember who said it. It's definitely an ancient philosopher, but somebody said that a man lives two lives and the... F That's what it is. Okay, oh, a man has it. two lives. The second one starts when he realizes he has just one. Yes, okay, okay. Okay, okay you yeah. get it, right? I get it. I so get the point it. is, we, the beginning of your life, you live simply day-to-day, -day, whatever, floating through the whims of life. But then when you really sit and think for a second, I only got one shot. Mm -hmm. Imagine if you're an archer and you're competing in a competition. Now, if it was a three-shot competition, you'd be much less worried about hitting that one first shot perfectly, right? You definitely train, but maybe not as hard as if you only had one shot. What if you only had one arrow to win the entire competition? That's life. You only have one shot at this. So why not train as hard as you can? Why not eat properly? Why not live life to the fullest? Why not try all these different things and avenues that life has to offer? Why sit here and be the same when you could change and experience so much more? One thing I think a lot of people get confused about is that you need to be in a bad state to change. Mm -hmm. I think that there's a, it's a quote and it says, when we hit our lowest point, we become open to the greatest change. And I think that's completely true. When we hit rock bottom is when we become the most ready to change because we have reflection. We're like, man, you really realize what's wrong with your life. You'll know it. When you're at your lowest point, you know what is wrong with your life. Because I think once you realize the problems of your life, that reflection is the greatest pain. Mm. that's the hardest part of your life is when you realize what's wrong. But that's when you can change. But just because the greatest change happens at your lowest points doesn't mean it has to be the only change. Mm. You can still change when you're happy. Like, for example, your millionaire example. This guy is very happy, sure. 
that doesn't mean he does he doesn't have to change or he doesn't need to change. Yeah. Wait, I said the same That's thing. That's the same twice. thing. Yeah. Wait. I'm trying to think about it, but it's like it doesn't mean he can't change. There we go. Mm. He still okay, can. I get what you mean. Just because you're happy doesn't mean that you can't change. Anybody can change. Right? You don't need to be sad to change, but you don't need to be happy. It's whenever you can move forward and you can create a difference in your life, that's when you should be open to change. You know, I wanted to use this on a future episode as the quote of the week because it's such a powerful quote. And it was from a video. I think Seabum said it after he won Mr. Olympia his third time, I want to say, or maybe his second time, something like that, third or second time. And when he won, he went on stage, he was given the microphone, and he talked about his friend named Zach Hunzinger, I believe. And this young man is 19 years old. And when he turned 19, he was he had already battled cancer three times, oh, I wow. think. And when Chris got the mic after winning, he said, this is a quote from my friend Zach, who has already battled cancer three times. And he said, you don't need to wait until you're dying to start living. Mm. You know how everybody has a bucket list. Yeah. Right. Everybody says, oh, when I have time, I'll do these things. Maybe I'll make that change in my life that, you know, makes me happy that the shot that I wanted to take, but I'm not doing it because I got time. As somebody who battled cancer three times, he, he's saying you don't need to wait until you're dying from cancer to live out your life. Mm -hmm. Think about all these people who realize, hey, I'm going to die in a year. So what am I going to do? I'm going to travel the world. I'm going to go skydiving, going to go do all these crazy things that I never would have done. Why do you have to wait until you realize that your life has an expiration date to do it? Now, acknowledge you might not have only one year to live, but you do have a limited amount of time to live, right? Compress your life down to how realistically, how much time do you really have? I think those really eye-opening moments is when you look at the passage of time. How far have we come already? And how much time do we have left on this earth? There's an Instagram page. And it's literally called 2024 progress bar or something like that. And it's just this little like game style progress bar with a percentage. And every day it loads up to how much percent of 2024 is done. Already we're at like 17 or 20%, right? As I looked at it, I was thinking to myself, already I thought it just became 2024. And so time flies like this. So the question is, now that you realize you only have a set amount of time, are you going to live it like somebody who's really dying? Are you going to go out there and make the most of every day? Or are you going to sit here and still do the same thing over and over and over again like a boring book? Imagine a book, but ev in every new book, the character does the same thing, runs back to the same ex, runs back to the same boss battle, doesn't change at all. There's no character development. Nobody would ever buy that book. Or a TV show where the character never changes and loses to the same thing over and over and over again. Nobody would watch that. And it's interesting because I think when you're on your deathbed or whatever ending you assume, I think you'll look back on your life and you're going to be the one reading that story. Mm -hmm. So imagine if it was a boring, really boring story. Yeah. Would you on your deathbed really be happy about it? No, but I know what you would feel. Regret. Regret. You Indeed. would say, why didn't I take that leap? Why didn't I try something new? And I think it's very interesting that a lot of these people wait so long to do these things and then run out of time because you're waiting so long to get them done that in the end, you won't have enough time to do it. It's like procrastination. I know a lot of people, you know, well, I work better when there's five minutes left on the assignment, but you're not handing in your best work because you didn't have enough time to put in the effort. Exactly. So you delayed it off because you thought you had time. And when the deadline caught up to you, now you're not doing what you could have done. And I'll admit that I'm guilty of it too. Like I am a bad procrastinator. I'll admit Serial it. procrastinator. Serial procrastinator. I'll admit that. I'm, that's true. But that gives me insight into how, how damaging it is and mm -hmm. how important it is to realize that, hey, sometimes you got to make the change. You just got to do something about it. Exactly. You know the crazy thing is? That is literally exactly how I put it with the person dying. Think about it. You had all this time to do these things, but now that you realize, hey, I only have five minutes left to do it, I'm going to do it now to the best of my ability. Why not attack life with that ferocity when you have time to do so? Indeed. I think that that's the point. Indeed. Yes, that's a great 
contribution, buddy. Anyways, last point. I was trying to drink water, man. Okay, last point, okay? You'll never know what you could be if you don't make a change or try anything new. You want me to tell you the greatest example of this? I'm thinking if I could, I guess it. I mean, he's famous and he's a YouTuber, but, well, I mean, I guess he's not really, like, he posts his videos on YouTube, but, like, that's not why he's famous. Well, yes, it is, but what he does on YouTube is not, how do I explain Bro, this? What are you saying? Okay, never mind. He's just a famous guy on YouTube. Everybody knows him right Mr. now. Mr. Beast. No, Sam Sulek. Oh. Okay. Uh, Everybody knows Sam Sulek. Super, super jacked guy. But you know that he didn't start his YouTube channel for over a year when he should have, and Mark, his brother, told him, yo, you should post your videos to YouTube. You have an insane physique. You already record these things. You should upload them to YouTube. And Sam was like, no, nah, no, nah, it's okay, man. I, I don't think I should do that. Mark was telling him for a, a year. And then finally after a year, Sam starts posting his videos and blows up like crazy because everyone's like, oh, my God, this kid has that physique? Get out of town. This guy's crazy. And now everywhere Mark goes, he gets called Sam's little brother, even though Mark was the reason that Sam even started posting in the first place. So if you really think about it, if Sam Sulek had never taken the jump because Mark told him to, right? If Mark didn't push him, Sam wouldn't even be the person that we know today. He wouldn't be up there. So what if you're the next, maybe not the next Sam Sulek, but the next whatever it is in your field? You know, what if you're the next Elon Musk of entrepreneurship? What if you're the next Magnus Carlsen of chess? Yeah. Who knows? You're, you won't know until you try something new. And let's be honest, Deep down, everyone has that thing that they're interested in. Everybody knows, hey, I like these certain things. I could do these certain things for fun, but I know I don't get paid for it, so I won't give it a shot right yeah. now. Find a way to get paid from it. Find a way mm -hmm. to do it so good that people will pay you for it. It was, I, I don't know who said it, and it's really bugging me. But what they said is, find something that you would do for free and find a way to get paid for it. I feel like it was Steve Harvey who said that. Maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. Because he was talking yeah, about the barber, yeah, I right? I think so. I think so. Because, yeah, if you, again, like one of the most famous quotes of all time is, if you love what you do, you don't work a day in your life. Mm -hmm. So instead of thinking about how can I get money, think about how can I enjoy my life. I feel like money is an effect. It's not a cause. Like you don't chase yeah. money. It'll Money will come to you. I think that money should never be a goal. If money is your goal, then you're misguided. I, mm. That's what I believe. I agree. I think that money should be an effect. You should make money because you wanted to make change. That's why I don't like the culture around today, especially around like quick money and how can you make as much money as possible in the fastest time. I think it's great to have money. Yeah, you can retire your parents. That's very important. But your effect on this world is far deeper than just money. Mm -hmm. And especially if you do like get money in a wrong way and the people that you're harming in that way, is it really worth it? Well, yeah. I mean, the saying goes, dope money comes quick, but it leaves quicker. Mm. So that wealth that you build right now, let's be honest, right? Let's say you're, I don't know, a trapper or something. You do all these illegal things. You make millions of dollars, right? Selling drugs, stealing, all these things. Is that wealth really able to be transferred to the next generation? Mm. I don't think so. Yeah. If you look at the real rich families, what do they do? They either work a respectable job or do some form of investment, like a real estate investor or something, right? They find ways to build equity and develop a portfolio of assets. Those can be handed down to, for generations. So that's my goal. My goal is to find something that I can give to my kids. I can leave a lasting effect on this world. But that effect shouldn't just stem to my family. It should be to everybody else around me. I should find a way to make the world a better place for them too. Right? Why do you think we do this in the first place? Why do we record these episodes and upload them to YouTube? Hopefully, one at least out of the 110 people that subscribe <laughs> finds it interesting, yeah. finds it helpful, finds something that they can change about themselves because of what we say. Mm -hmm. So if you make that positive impact on people, money will come for sure. Because as everyone knows, business is not just about money. It's, a, it's about dealing with people more than yeah. anything. Yeah, business is about money. It's about people, 100%. Exactly. Because... In the end, it comes down to people. That's where all this comes from. Your money doesn't come from... The sky. Yeah, exactly. It comes from people. So the way you interact with people, that's what will bring you money. Mm -hmm. And I think regardless of whether you get money, 
I think that on my deathbed, I would be far happier to have made a positive impact on the world with no money than to have all the money in the world, but to have ruined people's lives, the, the people around me. Yeah. Right? Because in the end, I'd rather sit in a bed of flowers that, like, actually, I'm trying to think of a way to word this, but I'd rather, you know, be surrounded by good things in a bad place than bad things in a great place. If that makes sense. Surrounded by good people in a crappy coffin or in an expensive coffin all by myself. Yeah, sure. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. Thank you. Appreciate it. Got him. But yeah, I don't think that money should be the goal. Like in the end, money's not even real. It really like, isn't. It really isn't. Oh, we, we just made this up. You know mm-hmm. what is real though is people. Mm-hmm. People are real. We exist. All this imaginary stuff that we made up and gave value to mm-hmm. is not the same as human life. Human life, I think, is one of the most valuable things on the planet, and it has intrinsic value. Mm-hmm. This money is just arbitrary. Yeah, We say, hey, guess what? It's worth this much now. Literally look at the stock market, bruv. Yeah. Today, this thing is worth this. Worth this. Tomorrow, it's worth this. Oh, Bitcoin was worth, I don't know, like 60000 a week ago, and now what? It's 92000 or something ridiculous like that. If those numbers can fluctuate that wildly, what, is that, what does that say about your money, man? What does that tell you? It's just yeah. arbitrary. Exactly. But the people around you aren't. Mm-hmm. You just got to never take care abuse of people to get to mm-hmm. money. 100%. And, like, uh, it's so sad to see because I think a lot of people, especially with... That's why I, one thing that I'd say is, for example, Andrew Tate. Um, I'm uh, link it to him a little here. Is that I don't necessarily disagree with everything he says. I don't necessarily agree with everything he says. Mm-hmm. But one thing that I really... Well, I found really sad is uh, the amount of people that tried to branch off of his success on the platform and, you know, create their own thing by basically copying his values, but they took away a lot of the most important things of what he said because they took all the money stuff. The things about, guys, you need to get rich. You can't be a broker. You need to escape the matrix and make a million dollars. They took all that stuff, but they never took the, you know, be respectful to the people around you. Be kind to the people around you, you know. Be stoic. Yep. Those kinds of things that he said they were blown out of proportion because everybody else was trying to push the message of money. And then because they wanted to, you know, sell their courses or do whatever, they wanted to use people to get to money. So if you took Andrew Tate and you looked at the other stuff he said, I think that what he preached about being a respectful person, about, you know, taking care of the people around you, about being stoic, about being controlled, I think those are great things. What he said about money, I don't know about that because I don't think that money should be your God. That's... The um, one thing, it's a quote from a Prince Ye video, and it's, it's, wait, uh, that's crazy, because I was just about to make a quote from the book I read today, too. Damn, I'm trying to think about it, and I'm, it's like, can I say the quote that yeah, I Yeah, sure, go ahead. Well, the quote that was in the book, it's crazy, because I already mentioned the book today, just by complete chance. I didn't even write this down. I just figured, like, oh. that it came to me, because I read it today, Yeah, but- one of the quotes in the book was, there's no God worshipped more on this planet than money. Mm-hmm. People worship this as if it's going to solve all your problems. Yeah. And everyone says, yeah, I could do with an extra million in the bank. Of course you could. Who couldn't use yeah. an extra million dollars, okay? <laughs> Don't be stupid. Of course we all want money. But that shouldn't be the only thing that drives you. Yeah. Did it come to your brain? Did the thought figure? No, it was. So- it's something about that when money gets you, that's the problem. So mm-hmm. it's like, I think it's it's okay to get money, but when money gets you, that's when you have an issue. Because if money becomes your god, and you worship this money, you'll chase this money, you'll do whatever you need for money. Mm-hmm. You're no longer a real person. You're just you're literally just a slave chasing the green. Think about that endlessly running towards this piece of paper. Mm, that's true. It's it's got you in its vices. Yeah, you're not free anymore. Yeah. Think about it. That's literally the definition of slavery. You do something you don't want. For, well, I guess that's not really slavery because you wouldn't get paid in slavery. But, like, that's reality, man. I mean, it's true. It's true. I think if you continue to chase this thing and do things you hate for it, you make yourself miserable for it, is it really worth it? Like, genuinely, is ruining your life for paper really worth it? I'm not saying don't go out there and try to be successful. I think financial success is very important in your life. Mm -hmm. But just don't let it overconsume you. 
Yeah, hundred percent. You should still enjoy life. Like that's such a crucial part. And one thing that really sucks is that we fight wars over this stuff. Mm. We fight wars over all this arbitrary stuff. We get we in exchange for this, we give human. I was gonna say we that. pay human life. We pay for money with human lives. Oh my God! Unbelievable! Oh. Just cook that up right now. He is cooking, they ladies and gentlemen. Chef, you know? He is cooking. Yeah, Mr. Ramsey. I here. like. Uh, that's a crazy thought to me. Is that people are willing to kill each other for money? Yeah, not even in wars. Let's be honest. Look at crime on the street. People yeah. will chop your arm off for a watch on your hand. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at you, the UK. What the hell is this, huh? Yeah. Okay. When, hey, whoa, 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 when yeah, I get successful and I come yeah, to the yeah, UK, yeah, you're telling yeah, me I can't wear a watch being, there? We are not being. We are not discriminating against people from the UK. We're not stereotyping you guys. Don't worry. But to be fair, the crime is rampant, bro. It's like Gotham City over there. It's I mean, crazy. I think crime is rampant everywhere because people are so mm, that's lax also true. with the laws nowadays. Which I think is a topic for a whole nother day. God, mm-hmm. there's so much we can talk about. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, let's loop this back to change. Okay. Yeah. So first, we talked about why is change necessary. Now I hope you guys are convinced. You can't be the same forever. You know why? Because nothing is the same forever. Mm-hmm. Everything changes, and everything will die at some point, including you. So. Live your life to the fullest. Now, the next question is, how do we change? What are some actionable steps to take? Because, yeah, it's, it's you know, all honorable and valiant to say, yes, I'm going to go to the gym. New Year's resolution, I got this. And then what? After the first week, you're back at home eating potato chips on the couch like a bum. Okay? That's how you started in the first place. So the question is, what do we do to make change actionable and long-lasting? Now, the first step is, Realize you have a problem. Most people are too arrogant or too self-centered or too egotistical to sit here and say, yeah, I have a problem. Maybe I'm fat. Maybe I'm skinny. Maybe I'm broke. Yeah, maybe I'm sad. Mm, There you go. (laughs) Maybe I'm sad. Maybe there are things that I need to change. First, identify that. What is it that is a weakness to you? What is it that you're lacking? So first, figure that out. Find your problems. Next step, set a goal. Where do you want to be in a couple of months? What is the final target here? Because sure, once you reach that target, there will be another target to reach for, of course. That's how life is. It's simply a game. As you reach the next level, there's always another level in front of you. But first, let's start with getting to level two. When are you going to reach level two? And what is that level two for you? Because not everyone is playing the same game. We're all in the same, how should I say this? The same world, world, but we're not on the same mission. Yeah. That's the best that way was, to put it. That was a bar. You know me. That was me. a great analogy. We are both cooking. Today. Oh, my God. Wait. Oh, my God. He's got it, no, ladies I and gentlemen. No, I heard a quote, and I was like, dude, this is so sick. And it's, um, life is one of the hardest tests because we all try to cheat, but everyone's exam is different. Damn, okay. We try to copy other people's lives, not knowing that the challenges in our life are not going to be the same. Yo, that's kind of crazy. I saw it. Have you ever seen those quotes where it's like, you know, my my grandpa once told me, and then they put a quote, and then like everybody in the comments is like, was your grandfather Socrates or something like that? Uh Uh-huh. I I always get those videos on my feed, and I'm like, damn, these are some baller quotes. That is kind of crazy. Yeah, I was like, damn. I I know, because I was thinking like, when can I use this quote in a video? Because I saw it and I was like, man, I really like this quote, but I feel like it's so hard to use somewhere. And you just brought it up and I was like, damn, that's crazy. What can I say? The opportunity simply presents itself. Yeah. That's the truth. I mean, there's always going to be a chance for you to show what you're made of or, you know, speak about something that came to your mind. If you can tie it in properly. That's yeah. the crazy thing about, I, I guess, speaking in general. You can technically tie anything to anything with the right transition yeah like i use megamind in my english essay today that's how you know i'm the go i mean to be fair megamind is such a good like example of, we should watch that movie again i haven't watched it in I, a long I, time i watched it recent well actually maybe it was like two years ago but like i know the plot very well i love it. it's such a good movie break it down for me give me a give me the a whole movie no just like the like you know how movies have like a description that say it's about this guy who did this i don't know megamind big bad villain versus metro man good guy and then Me- uh, metro man dies and well die oh wait spoiler alert firstly yo my, oh bad. my god um, who hasn't watched but Mega then Mind? metro man quote like in one of their battles metro man quote unquote dies 
and Mega Mind now goes out to build to create a new superhero to fight against him because he feels lonely. Because he like takes over the entire city and he's just lonely because there's no hero to stop him anymore. So he goes to create a new hero, but he accidentally creates a bigger villain. And then Metro Man comes back. Oh, is that the dude with the curly hair? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that okay, guy. okay, okay. I remember and this. And then they find out Metro Man actually just faked his death because he didn't want to be a hero anymore. And then, yeah, they go back and then Me- Mega Mind defeats the new villain. And yeah, it was just such a good movie. Honestly, now that I said the plot out loud, I really That is a crazy, it's crazy a great plot. movie. Well, if you think about it, that's also the same thing with Batman and the Joker. You know how. When there's an alternate timeline where Batman dies, oh, and yeah, I know. the Joker is at a bar, and I'm pretty sure it's Robin. I don't know which Robin. I think it's, oh, what's his name? Dick it's Grayson. not. It's not Dick Grayson. It's the other one. The one that becomes Red Hood. No idea. Ah, oh, wow. I suck. I can't believe I don't remember his I name. Have no idea. Okay, whatever. Point is, um, he's there and he's talking to Joker, and Joker says like he stopped being Joker because Batman's not here to fight him anymore. They're like two halves of the same coin. Wait, two sides of the same coin. Or just like the two koi fish in the pond Yeah, from Avatar. And, uh, Push and pull. pull. Life. And, and yang. Life and death. death. Yeah. That's crazy. The two balancing forces. Mm-hmm. Okay, how did we end up here, yeah, bro? Yeah, that was that such is a, a crazy yeah, tangent. Side tangent. Okay, anyways. Running back. How do we change? Tell me. After we figure out a problem, what do you think is the next step? You know what? I'm going to connect this to Buddhism and how it teaches you to solve your suffering, which is after you identify a problem, mm-hmm. you identify the s- path to this. Wait, does it go solution then? Path? Yeah, it goes solution first. First, you find the solution, and then yes. you find the path to the solution. Yes. So outline a goal. That's step number one, is to find out how or where do I want to be? What do I want to change is like step one, and then it's what do I want to become? That's mm-hmm. step two. And then step three is... How do I get there? It's like you got point A, you got point B. Let's find what's in between. What is happening today? We are straight up cooking. Why? Was that absolutely good? You know what that is? What? Intermediate value theorem from calculus. Okay, never mind. We're not cooking anymore. It's over. No, that was definitely because like... Never okay, mind. you know what? You know never what? Mind. Not, we're not doing that. <laughs> we're not, no, we're not bringing that. calculus on the show. Okay. Get that out of here. All right. Anyways, like you were saying, setting... Setting a goal, okay? That's important. Like that's that's what I said before too. We have to set actionable targets. Where do we want to be? Okay. Next step is to start with the little things. You can't expect to run a marathon if you've never run before. Yeah. You gotta start by running a couple kilometers, let's say a couple miles, okay? You gotta start with something. Taking those first couple of steps is what allows you to get better. And it's interesting because I watched a Kurzgesagt video. Shout out my boys. They make some of the best YouTube videos I've ever watched in my entire life. 100%. Their animation is so good, bro. Oh, my God. And it's so educational. So, yeah, I strongly recommend that if you want something interesting to look at and watch, something educational too, I will pop it up here because if I said Kurzgesagt, I don't think that you'd be able to spell it. Yeah, it's such a... I remember trying to find their videos, and I was just like, dude, I cannot find it. If you can spell Kurzgesagt in the comments without Googling it, I will give you $10. You might have to pay a lot of people $10. Nobody is commenting on this video. I guarantee you. Good point. Good point. The only person who will be is one of our our homies saying W video. Shout out my boy. He knows who he is. Yeah. But yeah, point is, you got to start with something small. And as I was referencing them, I watched a video about how do you really change your life. And in that video, he said, the first thing to recognize is that your mind is like a jungle. There's trees, vines, bushes everywhere. Now you are in this jungle, and you have to navigate your way through it to the things that you want. But navigating through it takes energy. So we slowly start to chop down these trees, walk over these bushes, and get to where we need to be. Now imagine you walk to that same destination every single day, over and over and over again. Now, over time it no longer becomes this tree-filled, bush-covered, overgrown vines path. Now, over time, it slowly becomes a clear walkway. Then over time, it becomes a paved highway to get to where you need to be. Why? Because you've walked the same path every day. You've built a habit. So to develop that, the first step is to go there the first time. Find that path in your mind 
the jungle and get to where you need to be. Then do it again the next day and again and again and again. And then within a couple of weeks, it's ingrained in your memory. The same way when you pick up your phone, the second I pick this thing up, immediately what am I going to do? You will very rarely look at your phone for the one thing you wanted to look at. Yeah. Out of habit, you will open Instagram or open Snapchat or open a video game, do something you weren't originally going to do. Why? It's because you've built the habit that when you unlock your phone, you do something fun. So if you were only going to check the time on your phone, now, oh, I've already picked up my phone, out of habit, I'm going to go do that one thing. So the point is build strong habits. Build that road in your mind to get to where you need to be so that every time you want to do that thing, you just walk the same path. There's no restriction. There's no friction for you getting there. It's the best place to explore this is Atomic Habits. Mm. One of the best books I've ever read, especially, well, for breaking your habits and building habits. So I suggest anybody out there, go go and read Atomic Habits. I know we've referenced it before on, I think it was episode four, <coughs> episode four which is interesting, 10 episodes exactly later, referencing wow. it again. Such a great book, and it really helps you change and while i'm here i'm gonna i'm gonna drop a quote by abdullah Bilal because uh he's kind of been asking me to put this quote in and um all right shout out abdullah Bilal. congratulations you made it to the bright horizons podcast buddy good work my friend but his quote stay busy because when you let it get quiet that's when it truly gets louder (laughs) <laughs> Damn. Yeah, there, there's he his cooked. quote. There's he his cooked. quote. Um, I'm not going to lie. At first I was like, huh? But then it, it took a second. I was like, okay, okay, I get it. I get it. You know I get it. Flesh it out for the people who don't get it. So you got you to gotta keep working. Mm-hmm. And that doesn't mean, you know, you, you don't have to be giving 110% at every point in your life. Mm-hmm. But you should definitely keep moving forward. You should keep on looking for change. I feel like people don't associate the fact that work is still being done when you're looking for a solution. Right, looking for a solution is step number one to the problem, or well, I guess identifying your problem. But just because you haven't made a, your first step, your first dip into the water, doesn't mean that you haven't done anything. I think that there's a balance to be walked between planning and moving, but to still look for a solution is still getting something done. So here, don't let yourself become stagnant because what's going to happen is that's when your life's really going to get messed up because time's going to move by and you're not going to change. You're not going to adapt. You're not going to become better. Damn. Mr. Abdullah coming in clutch here. Yeah, that was a great quote. That is a very good quote. Shout yeah. out. Shout out to my he boy. Very, he was very sad I didn't use it on the last episode. So. It's okay. Well, now yeah. he can be happy. No, here's what you should do. You should not say anything and see if he watches the thing yeah. to see if he you finds know, it. Maybe, maybe I will. There you go. Problem solved. Mm-hmm. But yeah, as we come to the conclusion of this episode, there's one other thing I wanted to say. So now we know that you need to set a goal or, you know, I want to reach this certain spot. The next step is to start with small things. Just getting out of bed in the morning on time, brushing your teeth every single day, going for, let's say, a one-kilometer run. Now, what is the final step that will last you for the rest of your life? And that is to find purpose, to live off purpose and not passion. Everybody says, find your passion. Do what you feel passionate about. That's great, and I think you should do what you're passionate about. But I think that you should change it from passion to purpose. Passion means you enjoy it. I hope you enjoy what you do, but I guarantee you, even on the things that you enjoy doing, there are going to be days where you don't want to do it. So on those days where you're not passionate about working, do you still get up and do it anyways? Compare purpose and passion to motivation and discipline. Passion or motivation is the spark that starts the fire. But purpose or discipline is the wood that keeps the fire burning. You better not let that fire go out. And the only way to do that is by having the wood of purpose. Saying, hey, I know what I want to do. And that purpose will drive me for the rest of my life. Because you're going to wake up on days where it's raining. You're still going to have that drive to be An athlete, you still have the goal of being an athlete, but you're definitely not going to want to get out of bed and run in the rain. But understanding this is my purpose. My purpose is to be great, to be the best runner there ever was. 
Never forget the end goal and those little moments of friction will be a lot easier to overcome. Damn. And with that, thank you guys so much for tuning in to episode 14 of the Brighter Horizons podcast. Again, one more time, special shout out to all of you for uh, absolutely demolishing the 100 subscriber mark. Thank you guys so much. I wanted to get one of those, like, you know, the birthday celebration, like, roller oh, thingies. Oh, that would have been pretty Beep. sick. Just pretend that I did Yeah. It. But thank you guys again. But before you go, it's time for quote of the week. Herm. Okay. Quote of this week is by... Guess. Oh. That was the whole point. Marcus Aurelius. No, god damn it. I should really stop handing you the baton. Why? Okay. Wait, give me a hint. Jesus. One W guess. Mans. So many W Mans. W. So it starts with a it's not Wayne Gretzky, is it? Perchance? No. Uh William Shakespeare. Oh god. I literally talked about it today when we were looking at the TV. Willy Wonk. <laughs> yo, I, I'm, 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 I'm trying. Yo, give me another hint. We were watching an ad about a show, and I said, "Oh my God, is that Winston Churchill?" Bing pot. Jeez, that was that, a, like, that so is such a hard thing to guess. How? Man. It's a quote. Everybody knows the meme that every quote came from Winston Churchill. I have no idea. What is that? I never heard that. Oh my God. Okay, never mind. Point well, is, anyway, it's by Winston yeah. Churchill. Right, okay. Winston Churchill. Quote of the week: To improve is to change. To be perfect is to change often. Winston Churchill. And that's to say that, as another wise man once said, I'm going for the quote, quote-ception here. Be like water, my friend. Bruce Lee. I know. Ladies and gentlemen, be adaptive. Adaptable. Adaptable. Change. And be the best version of yourself. Because, like we said, you only got one shot. So the question is, how well will you shoot this arrow? Thank you, guys. Make sure you go out there, change, be fluid, be adaptable, and make sure you live a positive life, y'all. Peace out.